In the early 20th century, great scientists like Albert Einstein and Niels Bohr were engaged in enormous discussions. Small particles, quantum particles, seemed to behave in unexpected ways. They could, for example, be in two places at the same time. These bizarre properties of quantum particles are the building blocks of the quantum computer, the subject of my work at the Q-Tech Institute at TU Delft. Quantum computers can perform lots of complicated calculations at the same time, which makes them super fast. Certain problems that would take normal computers thousands of years to solve would take a quantum computer just a few minutes. That is, if it actually existed, because we've a host of technical hurdles to overcome before you will ever see a quantum computer on your desk. I've been working on one of these hurdles with my colleagues, how to correct calculating errors in quantum computing. Quantum particles can be in multiple states at the same time. Imagine that this spinning top was a quantum particle. Then it would be able to rotate counterclockwise as well as clockwise at the same time. That's what we physicists call a superposition. It's counterintuitive, and it's exactly what makes quantum computers so fast. But these superpositions can't bear to be looked at. If I stared at you, you wouldn't change much. Okay, if I kept staring, maybe you'd blush a bit. It's very different with quantum particles. Imagine a quantum particle in superposition, rotating both counterclockwise and clockwise, and then you peek at it to see which way it's spinning. It will immediately pick one direction. Superpositions are so fragile that just so much as looking at them will break them. That gets in the way if you want to build a quantum computer. If I want to store information with my quantum spinning top as a tiny quantum bit, a one or a zero in the quantum computer, I have to shield it from prying eyes. Otherwise, they are always going out of sync. The superposition disappears and I lose my quantum bit. I'd be better locking it away in a safe where nobody can see it. But then I have a new problem. I can't see it anymore either. It's useless because I can't use it for my calculations. In any normal computer, the solution would be simple. Make the calculation with a backup of the information to keep the original bit protected. Unfortunately, making copies of particles in superposition is prohibited by the laws of quantum mechanics. We need a better solution, quantum error correction. We take three quantum particles and distribute our zero or one across these three quantum particles. Now, if one of these particles goes out of sync with the others, we can use a special trick. We don't totally look at them, but we can look at them a little bit. It's as if a quantum wizard protects the information in the quantum spinning tops with his black cloak. No one is able to see the spinning tops and the superpositions are safe. But the wizard has a special torch that he can shine under the cloth. It won't reveal the spinning direction of the tops, but it will let him see if they are out of sync and whether something has gone wrong. So he can fix these errors without ever looking at the spinning tops. Imagine the third top has gone out of sync. The wizard can see that the first two are working well together, but that the second and third are not. He gives the third top another twirl and it falls back into sync with the others. The error is corrected. We didn't use spinning tops in my experiment. We used electrons in diamond crystals instead. But they do have a similar property that we call spin. In my experiment, we compared the spins of three pairs of atoms and gave them another twirl if we found something wrong. In this way, we successfully protected our quantum information against errors, and we came one step closer to the quantum computer.